This is the review of the new West Side Gun album, Hitler Wears Hermes 8. This is the latest release from Griselda CEO, West Side Gun. If you haven't heard of Griselda and you haven't heard of West Side Gun, you've been living under rock, a crack rock, if you will. West Side Gun and Griselda have been on an absolute tear. Um, since hitting the underground scene back in the early 2010s. They've really taken their style of rap, a style of rap characterized by dense lyricism, coke rap, street talk, minimalist beats, um, a style that was really pioneered by guys like Rock Marciano or guys like Freddie Gibbs. Um, they've taken this style and put it in the forefront. Um, it's really been getting a lot of mainstream attention from guys like Kanye West as they were featured on the last Kanye West album, the last DMX album. So this is the eighth installment in the Hitler Wears Airman series. This is a series that's dated back to 2014. This is a series that's gotten a lot of critical acclaim, especially the back half of the series with Hitler Wears Airman 5 rec receiving a lot of uh, positive reviews and Hitler Wears Hermes 7 also had a lot of critical acclaim. On top of that, West Side Gun is coming off a phenomenal 2020 in my opinion. His album Pray for Paris was on a lot of end of the year reviews, a lot of top 20, top 10 lists. Person was a top 20 album in my opinion. His album Who Made the Sunshine was in my opinion almost equally as good. He also had that Fly God is an Awesome God 2 project that I thought was really solid um, and really displayed a lot of crisp writing. Uh, so that being said, I was super excited for this album. And after listening to this album, I think a lot of my high expectations were met. That being said, we're about to break down this album like West Side Gun, breaking down a kilo from Poppy. This album has two intro tracks, Murder and Max Hill, produced by Danny LaFleur, and Blessed Times, produced by Conductor Williams. Uh, these two producers, they handle the vast majority of the production on the album. Danny LaFleur handles Murder at Max Hill. It's strictly an instrumental track. Um, it has a ominous sample, some reverby stabs in the background. Nothing too crazy about the intro. Uh, I do think it sets the soundscape of the album a little bit. Blessed Times is produced by Conductor Williams and has an even more ominous sample. And the effects that Conductor puts on that instrumental is just vintage Conductor in my opinion. Um, I do like the beat a lot. Uh, but more importantly than that, we have A. Rasheed collaborating once again with West Side Gun. He's a frequent collaborator on a lot of the West Side Gun and the Griselda projects. Um, and he's doing what he does best, just giving us some life advice, you know, telling us how to become better people. Down like Christmas ornaments in February, Conductor. nigga. Yeah. You better go get you some motherfucking books. You better go study. You need some paintings in your motherfucking house, son. Man. But yeah, I think the intro was entertaining. The album really gets kicked off with Mariota. This is a track produced once again by Conductor Williams. Look, and it's no Eurostep or a Frank Murphy off of Who Made the Sunshine, but I definitely think it gets the job done. And I think the beat is definitely good. Lyrically speaking, you can see right off the bat that West Side Gun's pen is just getting sharper and sharper. I think just a few years ago, there was a point in time where there was a clear separation in talent level as far as pure penmanship and lyrical ability. But I think he's starting to show that that gap is, is narrowing significantly. And while I do think he does lack some things in certain areas, whether it be his ability to punch compared to a Benny the Butcher or Conway the Machine, or his lack of wordplay compared to a Makami, I think he definitely makes up for it in terms of charisma and humor. Um, and I think we see that right off the bat with the opening lines of Mariota. Gun opens with the lines, listen here, 50s in the card has made my vision clear. Rode the Pyrex three times, my coat genie appear. Gun also flexes pin a little bit with this dope rhyme scheme. You don't even gotta ask who run the culture. Been taking loafers with the square toes, running from cops, Mariota, throwing baking soda, SK with the strap is Cobra. And content wise, you know what you're getting with West Side Gun. You're getting coat wraps mixed with this high fashion and high luxury lifestyle often weave into within the same lines or interchange back and forth between his Jared Dillon lifestyle and his lifestyle of wealth. And while his coattails aren't as gritty as say Benny the Bush where I literally feel like I'm in the trap and there are Jays outside the door right now. West Side Gun is more so we're in Beverly Hills and someone just happens to have crack on the stove. Stove God Cooks is a frequent collaborator, very frequent collaborator on this album. He has a verse on Mariota as well. 
Um, I do like the fact that he kind of borrows West Side Gun style, which makes some continuity between the verses, and it's something that we see between a lot of the guest features on this album. Um, overall, he gives a solid verse here. West Side Gun and Stove Got Cooks are back for the very next track, Vogue cover. I do like this beat a good bit. Well, I do think it's verse and Mariano's a tad bit better. I do like this verse as well. The verse start off a tad bit slow, but West Side starts going double time midway through the verse, and that's where I think it really picks up. He did have some some pretty witty standout punches here. He had the line, gauge down my leg, had me walking like I'm cramping. And he had the bar, my triple beam and my SB's got a bird on it. Gun ends his verse talking about this tweaker who he said was singing on the pipe like Eddie LaVert. And then the song just cuts out into <laughs> Eddie LaVert singing Baby Hold On To Me. And he had West Side Gun doing his machine gun ad libs throughout the verse. That's that's the kind of ignorance I'm here for. Stove Guy Cooks comes in with the y'all. I went to a job interview and the interviewer made me wait for a long time to see if I really wanted the job. So just in this case, replace the Starbucks interviewer with the plug. The plug was doing some interesting stuff like, you know, cutting his grass, typical things I can envision. Um, a guy who brings in multiple kilos um, a week doing right you know if you're in netflix drug dealing movies I, I guess you might like the verse a little bit i thought it was kind of mid then we have margella split toes where i think guns verse is pretty middle of the road he mostly raps about being in prison and he also weaves that into some luxury raps and he weaves that into some street tales and you can kind of take that as one of two ways maybe it's just West Side Gun's typical stream of consciousness weaving between subject style of rapping, but also could kind of perceive it as West Side Gun being inside of prison, daydreaming on being back on the outside. But either way, I think the verse was just okay. But thankfully, Montcomy comes in on the second verse and he picks up right where he left off on his Pray for Haiti release earlier this year. And what can I say, Mock is a mock on this track. He delivers a dope verse. The rhyme scenes, as with any Montcomy track, are pretty insane. I mean, he's rhyming almost every single bar um, in his verse. He didn't quite have the wordplay. He had some songs on his Pray For Haiti album, such as 26 Letter. Um, and I think he still had a, a very good verse here. Speaking of Mac Homme, this next song, Draymond, features the exact same sample that was used on Mac Homme's 10 Boxes song on his Pray For Haiti album. Both songs were produced by Daniel Flair, so this could either be a Really cool nod to Makami, or it could just be laziness. Either way, I'm okay with it. Uh, work smarter, not harder. But on this song, Rome Street, Stove Guy Cooks, and West Side Gun combined for what is bar for bar, maybe the best song on this album. The newest member of Griselda Records, Rome Streets, pops off the song with a really good verse. Here, Rome does what Rome does. He has multiple flows, all of them are good. He has some dope rhyme schemes and some really witty punches throughout his verse. I think the standout line is, they say this a gamble, you live your life in casinos, death is at the door, I shoot the reaper through the peepholes. And I think Gun matches this with an excellent verse of his own and what I honestly think is one of West Side Gun's best verses on the entire project. He starts with this opening line, I had to spear the cocaine pot like Roman Reigns, don't get your chain pop, you know the name. And he keeps this rhyme scheme up for like four or five bars. And then it flows right into this four-ish, five-ish syllable rhyme scheme where he's rhyming pretty much every single word in the line. I mean, the verse is only eight or ten bars, but I think it's dope from start to finish. And then Stove Guy Cooks wraps it up probably as, as good as you possibly can. I particularly like the end of his verse where the beat is starting to trail off and Stove Guy's last few bars are a cappella where he says, The yayo guy, you still owe the plug, I just pay him off. It's what you do after the break, I'm Draymond. And then on the song Perry Perry, Rome Streets follows up his Draymond verse with a verse that I thought was even better. But once again, man, the rhyme schemes and flows here are crazy. I mean, he's spitting rhyme schemes that I get tongue tied even reading them off the screen. Midway through the verse, he's rapping. You get clapped in your gut as far as you're rapping. It sucks. Facts, my Mac is illustrious. Pretty sluts lust to get in touch with us. That made me sound good. Then he had some witty punches throughout the verse. Uh, he asked this line, now I'm effing with Griselda like Charles Cosby. I think that's, <laughs> that's a dope line. I don't know how anybody hasn't thought of it yet. Uh, that being said, man, I think uh, West Side Gun's verse here is a little stale. And look, from a technical perspective, you know, there's nothing wrong with the verse. If it was the first verse on the song, 
Um, I don't think you would really have any complaints with it. But the issue with the verse and one of the issues with the album and West Side Gun as a whole is there's just not a lot of variety to it, right? And look, there's plenty of rappers in this lane who only rap about coke. But where a rapper like Benny the Butcher can incorporate some storytelling or come with a machine can start incorporating some introspection. It starts to give a little bit of variety even though the content matter of essentially all their songs are the exact same. Gun on the other hand is offering almost exclusively this stream of consciousness rap style where he's just shifting from coke rap, street raps to high fashion and luxury. And on top of that, it's mostly just surface level braggadocio, which I'm a fan of, but when the verses are just good or really good as opposed to excellent or phenomenal, it can really start to feel monotonous and tedious. And look, there's definitely a novelty to West Side Gun's um, topical focus and his style, but that novelty can wear off. And I think that criticism definitely carries over to his verse in the song right now. But fortunately for Gun, the mellow melodic beat and the smooth vocals by Stove God Cooks really made this one of the smoothest songs on the album. Look, it's definitely a song that you can clean the trap house to. That's your sort of thing. Jada Kiss is also on this song. He has a really solid verse. And man, Jada Kiss's stock is going through the roof here. Unfortunately, though, the features couldn't save this song Wertheimer, as I do think this was probably the worst song on the entire project. The beat here isn't bad per se with West Side Gun. He has a great ear for beats, so you're probably not going to hear any bad beats. But I will say this beat is probably one of the lightest on the entire album. West Side Gun actually doesn't have a verse on this song, and he let Stove God Cooks and Boldy James handle the first two verses on the song. That being said, I think they both punch well below their weight. They did have a good line here and there. Stove God Cooks had this line talking about lying in court, saying he was spinning like Barry Sanders, spinning the truth like Barry Sanders. Baldy had a line where he was saying that his fiend's front tooth was missing, looking like Bobby from New Edition. <laughs> and now that I think about it, Junkies took a lot of strays this album. There was a lot of punchlines directed towards them. I think the public image of drug users took a bit of a hit. But anyway, Sauce Walker has the third verse on this song. He comes in using his outside voice and look, his animated performance does help pick up the energy on this album, but lyrical wise, it wasn't much there. Things do pick up in a big way though as Bash Money is an absolute flamethrower. This song has Lil Wayne, West Side Gun, same track. The instrumental is an absolute banger. I love the sample that they put in between West Side Gun's verse and between West Side Gun and Lil Wayne's verse. Sort of like the de facto chorus on the song. Um, but man, this song is sick. West Side Gun's verse is fire, but it's really Lil Wayne here who steals the show. He has a vintage Lil Wayne verse. Sounds like something that could have been on no ceilings. Lil Wayne's style of frequent punching is here. Plus, I think he really steps up his rhyme schemes to kind of match the energy of West Side Gun and everyone else on the album. Man, the results are dope. Um, he has a lot of quotables on the album. He has staring out into my driveway at the different car symbols, all big bodies with soft guts like scar tissue. He also has the line, D Celine Tall Tims is mean, short temper, but nothing stood out more than his line. Tunchi 3K, three bad chicks with me, booty beefcakes. My homie in the back masked up like Lucha Libre. Yeah, that, that bar is fire, I don't care what you say to me. The Brutus beefcake, booty beefcake is fire to me. The Lucha Libre line is fire to me. It, it fits with the rhyme scheme. I think this is actually a, a standout verse for Lil Wayne who actually hasn't had a bad 2021. His features this year have really been on par, especially with the Tyler Creator album. Um, and now here. And then we have the song Claire's Back, which is a roller coaster, a long roller coaster at that. This song has a beat produced by Camouflage Monk. It features West Side Guns, Griselda label mate, Spinny the Butcher, and Conway the Machine. I say this song is a roller coaster for a couple reasons. One, it's just really long and it's like the song drags out. West Side Gun has a good verse, it's nothing special about it. Um, but then the song just drags. You're expecting this Conway the Machine and Benny the Butcher feature. And after West Side Gun's verse, I mean, there's an interlude. He goes on this rant. The instrumental plays for a bit. 
I mean, it's only one verse and it's probably about four minutes into the song before we hear the beat change. And then finally Conway the Machine gets on the track and from the beat switch on, I think the track is dope. Uh, for one, I like the beat on the second half of the track more than I liked it on the first half of the track. And then Conway the Machine just loses his mind on his verse. I mean, right out the gate, he has the scorpion and the scale. That's why they gotta pay his buyer later. Still got old blood dried up on the razor. Fry this yay up. Got every arm and hammer box from the bodega. He keeps that same rhyme scheme up all the way to he talks about his chick hopping out of the Bentega. She got a bite like Tiana Taylor or something of that nature. But then towards the end of the verse, he has this line. Used to bag five eights. I had white in my cuticles, my shooter popping thirties. He must like pharmaceutical. Benny the Butcher's verse on here is dope as well. I think it's just an exhibition of Conway the Machine and Benny the Butcher's skill. It was a shame that it took so long to actually get to that verse, but the payoff was worth it. Then I think the next track, Spoons, was another highlight on the album. Come with the Machine is back going bar for bar with West Side Gun. They have one verse on the song and they're switching between each other back and forth. Anytime two rappers do this that have chemistry, I think this is one of the coolest things in hip hop. Um, and West Side Gun and Conway don't disappoint here. The verse is dope from start to finish. Even though they were sharing the same verse, I think Conway did get the best of West Side Gun here. I think his punchline stood out a little bit more in the track. The song is short. I definitely could have enjoyed it. This song went a little bit longer. I think it clocked in a little bit under two minutes long. Then we had the last track on the album, 716 Mile to close out the album. This song features Boldy James. I think it was probably one of the lightest beats on the album. Uh, West Side Gun here, it's not giving his best performance. I think he's just kind of out of things to talk about and he's going to ad lib his way through the rest of the album. Boldy Jane's verse here is interesting. I, I definitely don't think that this is Boldy's best verse that he's dropped this year. I definitely think that it was better than his verse on Wertheimer. But he has an interesting concept on this verse where he's taking books of the Bible and stories of the Bible and kind of weaving them and giving all of his bars a centralized theme for his metaphors. I think the execution on some of this is a little bit off though. Some of these bars is, is Boldy James kind of just forcing the concept here. For example, the line, for I went in with serving white boys in the suburbs, while I was down, I opened the book of Proverbs. That's just throwing the word Proverbs in there to keep with the biblical theme. I do think he tied other verse really well. The last line was something to the nature of, and I put all this on a stack of Bibles. Overall, I think this was kind of a lackluster ending for the album. But that being said, the album as a whole is really, really solid. Is it my favorite West Side Gun project? Do I think it is up there with a Fly Guide or a Supreme Blind Tail? No, but do I think it's a solid offering out of the Hitler Wears Airman series? 100% yes. Going into this album, if you're a fan of West Side Gun, you're gonna like this album. If you're a person who says that West Side Gun puts out the same project over and over again, then you're still gonna have this critique. The content here hasn't changed. This is not as ambitious and it doesn't have the mainstream elements. Um, and he doesn't experiment as much as he did in Pray For Paris. This album sounds like more bars on more of these Griselda style beats. The other criticism that I have for this album is not really much of a criticism, um, but I do think that its production on Pray For Paris and Who Made The Sunshine was a little bit better than the production on this album. That doesn't mean that the production here was bad by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I do love when West Side Gun teams up with Derringer. Derringer wasn't on this album. And I think Denny LaFleur and Conductor, as they produced most of the album, I think they did a good job, but I don't think this is his best produced album. But on the pros, man, bar for bar, West Side Gun is just getting better and better with each release. His pen is really starting to uh, be put up there with the other members of Griselda who are all known for having a dope pen and all known for their lyrical prowess. I mean, while in some of these songs he can take a backseat to some of the guest features, the features for the most part were good here. You have a few mediocre features. I, I think Stove God Cooks was on this album way too much. But then on the other hand, on a song like Draymond, he has one of the best verses on the entire album. I think Lil Wayne was the pleasant surprise on the album. His verse was absolutely fire. Guns of the Label Mates, Rome Streets, Mock Homie, Come With The Machine and Benny The Butcher. As you would expect, they had really good verses here. I and mean, I think overall, just the rapping on this album is very high quality. Like I said, I don't think this is the best West Side Gun project that he's released, but it's still very solid. Overall, I'll say this album is a 7.5 out of 10.